Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks, uh, organizing committee, for inviting me here for this presentation. You can understand my position here. In the crowd of cardiologists, cardiac surgeon alone, heart transplantation remains the ultimate gold standard treatment for end stage heart failure. Shortage of donor organ enforced to search for therapeutic alternatives which can provide adequate circulatory support and prompt availability. Mechanical circulatory support are group of technology that augment the ventricular person, either it augment or replace the ventricle. Improvement in device technology have made mechanical circulatory support an attractive alternative for bridge to recovery in end stage heart failure. Everyone is uh, aware about this uh, intermax scale. Actually, this provides an important prognostic information for patients with advanced heart failure receiving mechanical circulatory support. In general, MCS should be cons considered for patients with advanced or rapidly progressing heart failure who do not respond to a standard therapy. There are different types of mechanical circulatory support depending upon the pump location, extracorporeal, paracorporeal, intracorporeal, the ventricle support, it can be R-wired, L-wired, bi-wired, intended duration of use, short term or long term, and the mechanism of pump action. Temporary mechanical circulatory support are a group of devices generally used for less than 30 days to maintain adequate organ perfusion. There are certain indications, hemodynamic as well as clinical, where the MCS is indicated. If the systolic blood pressure is less than 80 on two inotropes, ca cardiac index is less than 1.8, CVP is more than 20, and LA pressure is more than 18 with low, perf uh, low perfusion, these are indications for MCS. In clinical conditions, cardiac arrest, cardiogenic shock, complication of acute MI, and high-risk intervention like PCI, ablation, etc. These are indication for temporary MCS. For surgeon point of view, post-cardiotomy syndrome, unable to come off bypass after cardiac surgery is indication for temporary MCS. So the patient is same, and we too are fighting for where should patients should go. Percutaneous temporary circulatory support. This is uh, these all options are open to you, cardiologist. These are used for LV support as well as RV support. For LV support, we have IBP, Impella, Tandem Heart, ECMO. For RV support, you have Impella, Tandem Heart, ECMO. Surgeons has a very limited scope. We have at this moment only Centrimag with us, and of course Central ECMO. A Biomed and Thoratec, these two devices are available but uh, are in use in very limited center in USA. If you see in last few years, there is increasing trend in use of short-term mechanical circulatory support, more by the cardiologist. If you see from 2007 to 2011, there is increase of 1,511 percent in use of uh, MCS by cardiologist. Surgeons contribution was only 101%. All temporary devices have different characteristic. If you see the ease of implantation, probably ECMO is the best. You can do a bedside implantation. Flow-wise, surgical wires are excellent. They will give you a flow of four to six liters. All these are su support LV, and RV, but PA support is given only by ECMO. If you see the duration of support, the surgical wires can give you a support for more than months. Everyone is familiar with this uh, intraatric balloon pump. This is the most widely and most affordable form of MCS. This is a counter pulsation device. Everyone knows the indications, cardiogenic shock, complicating acute MI, coronary perfusion prior to revascularization, prior to high-risk PCI as a bridge to decision or therapy with a higher level of MCS. But many trials like in 2009 meta-analysis 
and IIVP shock 2 trial regarding use of IIVP for cardiogenic shock, complicating acute MI has failed to show conclusive benefit. As a result, 2000, in 2013, the guideline downgraded use of IIVP from 1A, 1B to 2A, 2B. Even then, this remains the most commonly used MCS and over 60,000 implants worldwide are being used. Impella, this, is, this toy belongs to cardiology. This is an axial pump contained within a single pixel catheter. It provides a continuous flow from the left ventricle, ventricle to ascending aorta. It works on Archimedes is, is screw principle. There are different uh, uh, varieties of uh, Impella that is used, which gives different flows. Impella 2.5, Impella CP, Impella 5. The picture is showing how Impella are put in the heart. There are different trials. Protect 2 trial compared Impella 2.5 with high VP and Impress trial compared Impella CP 3.5 with IVP. This trial con concluded that Impella appear as safe as IVP, but it offers advantage of Im improved hemodynamics. But bleeding events were more with Impella than IVP. Tandem heart, again, this toy belongs to our colleague. This is extracorporeal centrifugal continuous flow pump, can be used for left, right, and y ventricular support. For LV support, the pump aspirates oxygenated blood from the left atrium and pumps it into the femoral artery. Flow via pump to the femoral artery is additive to the patient native LP output from the heart, just like a tandem bi bicycle. Clinical data of tandem heart, this supports use of tandem heart Patient with tandem heart showed improved cardiac indices, but difference in 30-day survival were not statistically significant between the groups. A retrospective study in 2012 by Carr et al. evaluated 117 patients with severe cardiogenic shock, refracted to IVP and vasopressor. Placement of tandem heart resulted in significant improvement of hemodynamics. VECMO, this is perfect storm of timing and technology. There are different tools of uh, this, uh, different tools by which cannulation of ECMO can be done. Simplest one is the femorofemoral, which can be done on the bedside, and the aorta to right atrium. This is practically done by the surgeons. A meta-analysis of 1,866 patient, adult patients who showed use of ECMO. Patients were survived to discharge were 25 to 65 percent. Need of a durable bed was required in 5 to 35 percent patient, and bridge to heart transplant was in 4 to 21 percent. Now, surgical options for mechanical circulatory support. We have very limited scope, as I told you. We have at this moment Centrimag only. This is the Centrimag console. This provides a centrifugal continuous flow, continuous flow extracorpular pump and one of the most commonly surgically implanted device for temporary circulatory support. It provides LV, RV, and y support. The Centrimag has FDA approval for six hours for LV support and for up to 30 days for RV support. A retrospective review by Takayama et al. of 143 patients who received Centrimag has a bridge to decision therapy showed 69% survival at 30 days and 49% survival at one year. A larger meta-analysis and system, systematic review of 999 patients by Porcinko et al. showed a survival rate on support between 62 to 83% and 30-day survival between 41 to 66%. Now, we are coming to our experience with MCS. IVP since January 2020, last uh, two years, this was a corona period, we used uh, around 36 cases of uh, interactive balloon pump, coronary surgery 32, for wall surgery 4, 3 for mitral, 1 uh, for AOT wall replacement. Duration of support were between 1, one to 9 days. We faced one, uh, uh, 5 vascular complications, embolectomy was done. VECMO, we have used VECMO in one case of acute cardiogenic shock following CABG. This was a 50-year-old male patient with poor LV function, diabetic and a smoker. 
indication was unable to come off bypass after doing CABG. Patient was supported with VA ECMO, right atrium to aorta for 72 hours, and it was removed on day three. Patient was discharged. Centimag, we have used Centimag in six patients. Post MI VSR repair, five patients, and post cardiotomy shock following CABG, one patient. Indication was same, unable to come off by cardiopulmonary bypass after the surgery. We put inflow cannula in LV and outflow cannula in the ascending aorta. The duration of support was between two to nine days. Dialysis was required in one patient. For management of this mechanical LVAD is we keep the chest open till the LVAD is working. The, the pre-placed IBP we continue at one is to one. We try to maintain a mean arterial pressure of 70 and LVAD flow around four liter per minute. Once patient is on LVAD, we try to decrease the inotropic support of the patient and all these patients required a good diagnosis as most of these patients are fluid overloaded. We give heparin to maintain a ACT of around 170. For weeding, we decrease the flow of LVAD and see for the mean, mean arterial pressure, the anotropic requirements should not go up very much. The pulsatility of the heart, pulse pressure should, should be more than 30 millimeter of mercury all the time. CVP should not go for, for more than 2 millimeter of mercury. And of course, the evaluation by echocardiography. If hemodynamics are stable and cardiac output is good, we remove the LVAD and after remo removal of LVAD, we close the chest. Our result, out of seven post-cardiotomy shock patients, six LVAD and one ECMO, we saved four patients, 57% survival. Out of five post-MI VSR patients, we saved three patients, 60% survival. Our result is comparable and marginally better than that of world figure. It may be probably due to the fact that IABP with LVAD gives a pulsatility flow which maintains the perfusion of microcirculation. This is incidental because as a protocol, we first put IABP in patient, unable to come off bypass and then escalate to LVAD. None of the literature has any data of combined LVAD and IVP. This is one patient where we put LVAD post my VSR repair. We are unable to come off bypass. The, in, the outflow can, can, uh, inflow cannula is in LV apex and outflow in ascending aorta. This is a LVAD machine. This is Centrimag. Same patient. Two days after, in the ICU, numbers, numbers were good, anotropic requirement come down. Patient was awake, most probably after six hours we closed the chest of this patient. This is a sentry bag in work, giving good flow of around 3.5, we are decreasing the flow in fact and IVP in position. This is another patient in which uh, on fourth day we re required hemodialysis for this patient. Numbers were good. Blood pressure was very good. We decreased the IVP to 1 is to 2. So, temporary mechanical support are increasingly used as a bridge to decision in patients with cardiogenic shock. The technical simplicity has favored the use of percutaneous technology. Surgically implanted devices provide longer and more stable support. Decision about MCS should be directed by an experienced team, that is shock team. Thank you very much. Just time for one quick comment from the chair, if any. It was a very nice presentation. Thank you. Uh, now, are there are any comments or questions from the panelists, the other chairpersons of the... Yeah, sir, I would like to ask a question. Like, uh, there are many 
uh, in our country we have cost issues about like ECMO or LVAD or uh, impeller device. So what, what do you think I mean, in periphery when we are performing a lot of uh, intervention, percutaneous intervention and many patients we see they come in cardiogenic shock. So what is your message? Should we be using IBP in those patients or not? Because as per IBP shock 2 trial, uh, it was not of much use. Look, in terms these, of these uh, equipments are for higher center. Not uh, you cannot think uh, about a starting what, what because asking, yeah. you will need manpower as well. Yeah. You will need a team of uh, perfusionist. No, I, I, uh, I, well, uh, so my my question is whether we should be using IBP in those centers. Yeah, that is for, only for you, 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 can put, you can put patient on inotropes and IBP and try to shift patient to the higher center. We still okay. should, should be using IBP. First. Correct. Correct. That's the time that we have, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you very much. Professor Jain, please.